My friends, it looks like the Raiders are actually interested in Juju Smith-Schuster. John Clayton says on 937 The Fan that the Raiders are very interested in signing Juju Smith-Schuster. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Juju Smith-Schuster came out on a Twitch stream and stated that he was interested in a, mo a number of teams, but one of those teams was the Raiders. And we talked about this a little bit back then. Um, but since then, my mind has shifted a little bit, um, and I actually would really like if the Raiders brought in Juju, um, and we'll get into why I feel that way, but uh, for those of you guys wondering, is John Clayton a good source? He absolutely is a fantastic insider of the NFL. Now, Clayton has said multiple times, multiple different things that have come true. Uh, specifically, uh, I remember that he had mentioned that the Raiders are interested in uh, Martavius Bryant, and that came true. So to me, it kind of seems like John Clayton knows uh, some inside information either with the with the Steelers or with the Raiders. Um, I think there's a good chance John Clayton is friends with uh, John Gruden, and there is a chance that maybe John Gruden mentioned to John Clayton that we're interested in Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, either way, let's get into the uh, the article and, and kind of what was said. Now, John Clayton was on a radio show, and he stated it, but we have the transcript here. When asked about what the market value for Juju is, and we'll talk about his market value because I don't 100% agree here, but uh, he said that'll be maybe $14 million for Juju because you know that the Raiders and several other teams are going to be moving on him uh, so that's gonna make it tough uh, Clayton was then pressed right he he was pressed on the fact that uh, was it indeed the Raiders that are interested um, Clayton says yeah from what I hear now obviously Clayton has some sort of inside information uh, he then went on to say yeah yeah well I mean a lot of uh, the people I mean Juju's one of the better free agent wide receivers Allen Robinson is the favorite but I think somewhere in the top three or four you've got Juju um, and I agree, man. I, I think Juju's up there as one of the top three or four players coming out. Uh, I know right now it's still pretty fresh, the whole Juju situation that did happen. But there's still a good chance that regardless of that happening, uh, there's still a good chance that most teams think Juju Smith-Schuster is a good wide receiver. Uh, is he a true number one wide receiver? Not at all. right? Juju Smith-Schuster is a second or third wide receiver. He's a slot receiver, and he makes things happen from the slot. He's very similar to a player like Jarvis Landry. right? Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster... Last year, did not have a great year. The year before that, it was okay. But the year before that, he had a fantastic year. And that was the year that he had another true number one wide receiver alongside him. Um, the article states that Smith-Schuster is expected to draw interest from several teams in March. Should he become an unrestricted free agent, which there's a high chance he will be. Um, I think reports have already came out that the Steelers are not going to bring him back. Uh, not that he's a bad player, but because they don't internally have the cap. Uh, and if you see Chase Claypool and how good of a talent he is, uh, Deontay Johnson, um, I think they have Eric Ebron. They have a, two good running backs. They don't really need another wide receiver, that too. Um, his market value, according to his article, they go super around $17 million per season. Um, Steelers can't afford that. Uh, now, I want to discuss that. I don't think Juju is worth $17 million. Um, in fact, I think he's worth much less. But just looking at the contracts of the wide receivers, if you look at the average yearly value, uh, DeAndre Hopkins is making an insane $27 million. Uh, and then underneath that, you know, you have a couple of receivers, Julio, 22, Keenan, 20. Uh, but they're, if they're saying he's going to make $17 million, I mean, that's that Mike Evans, um, Adam Thielen range, um, Tyree Kills right around there as well. I don't think he's that good of a player, but if I had to say, I think Juju would bring in anywhere from 11 to $14 million per year. Um, now, as a as a diehard Raider fan, I think Juju Smith-Schuster brings a couple of things to the Raiders. Uh, first and foremost, he brings toughness, right? And it's something that the Raiders need right they need to get tougher uh, especially when you try to play the type of football we play which is smash mouth football a uh, five six seven yard throws at a time we need tough players right we we need players that are going to go out there and, and lay some good blocks that's exactly what juju does juju can lay a lot of good blocks in my opinion uh, he's physical he's tough uh, he's not hurt, right? He's available. Uh, the Raiders tried doing that with Tyra Williams. Obviously, it didn't work out. Uh, but with the money we 
get from getting rid of Tyra Williams. I think we can use that money to bring back, to, to go out and get someone like Juju Smith-Schuster. And I know a lot of people want Nelson Aguilar. Uh, I think the Raiders can make it work where we bring back both of those players. But we are going to have to cut some uh, offensive linemen, right? I think uh, Tyra Williams, of course, has to be cut. Uh, Trent Brown, I think, should be cut as well. That's a, a, a big savings cap. Um, other than Trent, I think you can think about getting rid of Richie as well as Gabe Jackson. I know they're both good players. Richie's been hurt, uh, and he has one year left. Uh, and then at the same time, Gabe Jackson is a great player player uh but he isn't great to be paid as like the second or third highest paid guard right uh, guard is generally the one position in the nfl that you can save money at uh you can get good guards out there right i don't think denzel good uh is worse than gabe jackson in fact i think they're the exact same guard uh, and one gets paid i think three and a half four million dollars the other's getting paid 11 million right does it make sense to pay someone like gabe that much money um by getting rid of those three or four guys, uh, you can consider getting rid of uh, one of the quarterbacks, right? I, I think Marcus makes sense to get rid of him. Um, you're going to save at least $45 million. And then you can even look at some of the defensive contracts on the defense side of the ball. Uh, I think Juju, as well as uh, Nelson Aguilar, could both be brought back. I mean, think about the receiving core between Juju, uh, Nelson Aguilar, Henry Ruggs, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, right? Like, that's a really good rotation of receivers. Um, at the end of the day, we don't need any one of our players to get 1,500 yards and 140 targets. Like, we don't need that, right? Uh, but what we do need is we need tough physical players, right? When we throw that quick screen to uh, Ruggs, we need players out there blocking for Ruggs, right? And if it's not Ruggs that we're throwing the ball to, uh, we do a lot of screens to uh, Hunter Renfro. We need tough receivers out there to make those blocks, right? Uh, Ruggs wasn't getting it done this past year. Obviously, he's working out. He's training, and I'm very proud of that fact. Uh, we have other players on this team that uh, are invested in their time into other things, and I'm glad that Ruggs isn't falling within that category, right? I'm really glad that Ruggs is taking the offseason serious. He's putting in the effort. He's putting in the work. Um, I would love Juju. There's so many positives with Juju. Um Again, I mentioned this a little while ago, but uh, Juju Smith-Schuster was asked, uh, should I just stay in Pittsburgh? Uh, and then he said, Packers, Raiders, Jaguars, and the Jets. There's a lot of good places to go. He was asked specifically where he would like to go. Uh, and then later on, he once again added, and he said, uh, the Raiders are nice. And, you know, there's just a lot there, in my opinion. You know, Juju doesn't come off as one of those t uh, wide receivers that is going to say, unlike Antonio Brown, Juju's not that guy to say, hey, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, right? That's not what Juju does. And those are the type of players that I want on this team, right? I want team players. And I, again, I know that it's very fresh in everybody's mind, Juju doing the dancing and all that stuff. Um, when you're winning, that's perfectly fine. And when you're losing, obviously, it's it's not, right? You don't want to be down 30 points dancing, uh, right? It doesn't make sense. But I'm sure all that is a learning lesson for Juju. I think he's like 23, 24 years old. So he's still super, super young. Um, I would love to have Juju. But shifting focus uh, a little bit into Derek Carr. Um, first and foremost, uh, Derek Carr was ranked the 12th best quarterback out of the 59 quarterbacks that played this past year. Um, and, you know, I, I think he's definitely up there. But look who he is in front of. And this was the one thing that I kind of found interesting. He was right in front of Matthew Stafford. Um, Matthew Stafford went for two first-round picks, right? It kind of makes you think. Um, but basically, it says, Carr's uh, difficulty, and I quote, Carr's difficulty upgrading his status to no doubt top 10 quarterback might help fuel the seemingly eternal speculation about his long-term future with the Raiders. But unless John Gordon and Mike Mayock have a line on someone definitely better, and there's really only one theoretically available player who fits that bill, uh, hence Deshaun Watson, any change at this point, including switching to Marcus Mariota, would read more like a, a restless deck shuffling than anything else. Uh, as uh, uh, what they're saying is, it's not a, uh, it's not a, um, you're not getting better at the position, you're just kind of going side to side, uh, which I totally agree with. Uh, forget about blaming the Raiders' collapse on Carr. Would they have been in a playoff contention without him? Um, I don't think they would have been. Uh, there is a chance, depending on how Marcus played, would they have won the same number of games? I don't know if you can 100% say yes or 100% say no. Um, I, I do think that the Raiders' offense, right, with John Gruden running the offense, 
John Gruden running the offense, he designs good plays. He calls a good game. He, you know, it's a conservative offense um, that can obviously put up points. Uh, but we have playmakers, right? Don't don't forget the fact that we have the highest pit offense line. We have a first round running back. We have two good back of running backs. The best tight end in the NFL, or one of the best tight ends. Um, even Mar- uh, Foster Moreau, I-, I think Foster Moreau could be a top 10 tight end. Like, he's a talented ass player. Uh, don't be surprised if next year he goes for a thousand yards. Like, I would not be surprised. Uh, obviously, he was recovering from ACL surgery uh, this past season, so he didn't play a lot. I think people kind of forget the fact that he was hurt just the year before. That too, he got hurt like towards the end of the season. Might have been the final game of the season as well. Um, so it takes time, right? It takes time for players to come back. Um, but even with Marcus, assuming the players that we had in the offense, who knows how many games we would have won. Uh, shifting focus one more time, uh, talking a little bit about uh, Derek Carr's trades, right? Uh, if you guys haven't heard, and I quote, uh, teams have called and offered and have all been told no on trading for Derek Carr. And that is interesting. You, you know, a lot of people uh, talk a little bit about how Derek could be traded for two first round picks, possibly even more, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, teams have inquired according to David Carr. And it's interesting because I don't know if I 100% trust David. I, I, I think he would be a reliable source, but at the same time, he could be biased because of his brother. Um, but it's interesting to kind of think like maybe Derek knows that teams have inquired and Derek has already put it out there that, hey, I'm not going to be traded. But at the same time, what if like behind doors, Derek already knows he's not going to be a Raider next year, right? Like what if John's already informed him, uh, Derek is cool with it, and Derek's and his bro- told his brother, hey, put this out there, right? Like what if there's this whole thing behind it just to get that trade value up? Uh, that doesn't make sense, but you never know, right? Uh, lastly, the Washington football team, according to Albert Breer, was one of the teams that inquired about Derek. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you if you don't follow me on Instagram, I should say, go follow me because I, I put this picture out. But basically, uh, I put it out there. I, I think I posted a story. If Derek Carr goes to the Washington football team, I can guarantee you guys right now they will be a Super Bowl favorite team, or at least they'd be a team headed to the Super Bowl. Because you look at that offense, right, uh, w- uh, with um, – uh, Terry McLaurin, you look at some of the other receivers that they have that are that are younger, some of the older veteran receivers. Um, you look at the running back they just took. You look at that offensive line. Um, and then more than that, you look at the defense. Their defensive line, I think, has three first-round picks. Um, they have Montez Sweat. They have Chase Young. Um, and they have the defensive tackle from Alabama. Um, and then you look at their linebackers. Right? You got Ruben Foster, who should probably play this year. Uh, you have a couple other good linebackers there. You have some good secondary pieces. The Washington football team is a quarterback away from winning the championship. And I said this before. I think the Washington football team should go all in on a a quarterback. And I'm not talking about a rookie quarterback, right? Go all in on a quarterback like Matthew Stafford, who apparently they they did go all in for him. They didn't get it. Uh, Apparently, and I quote, they offered a first rounder and third rounder for Stafford, a haul close to what Carolina was willing to give up for him. And uh, end quote, um, they're going all in, man. They they went all in for Stafford, and I think that's a smart thing. And now they're probably going to inquire about Derek. If Derek gets traded, I think the Washington football team makes a whole ton of sense. Um, again, I, I, I'm in a, I'm in, I'm excited to kind of see what happens. But if the if the Washington football team wants to win a championship, go all in on Derek. Um, I think the Raiders would be smart to keep Derek until they can fix their defense. Um, the thing is, is you have two years to fix your defense because Derek has two years left on his deal. Um, I would never want to have a shitty defense, right? Like let's say our defense is still the bottom, you know, 25 to 32 defenses and Derek's do a contract. And now you have to pay him $45 million because at that point we're hindering ourselves, right? At that point, I would rather just get rid of car and just see what we can do, right? Like build the defense up, right? Suck. If that's what it takes to get that, that number one, pick or that number two pick or that number three pick um, because without one of those picks you'll never get a, a game-changing uh, defensive player right uh, and, and what I mean by that is we had the fourth overall pick we had the opportunity uh, to to get Devin White who I was all in for at the same time we also had the opportunity we're close obviously he got picked before us but Quentin Williams is a game-changing defensive tackle 
The Raiders were one pick away from being able to almost get him. If the Raiders got Quinn and Williams, our defensive interior would have been fixed for the next 15 years. If there's one, or if there's two positions, one of the two positions on the defense that I don't care what it costs to keep, uh, it's defensive tackle, right? If you get the top tier defensive tackle, you pay to keep that guy. Uh, and it's corner, right? You get the top corner, you pay to keep that guy. Uh, those are the two most important positions on the defense. Um, defensive end, I think, is is a little overrated. Um, I would not pay the highest paid defensive end because from the outside, it is further to get to the quarterback. As well as if you're double teamed with the tight end or even just a running back, you can stop that edge pressure. The inside's harder, right? If you have a, the number one defensive tackle coming from the inside, it's very hard to uh, double or triple team him at times. Because he can go, you know, he can line up over the center. He can go left or right. Um, and if the offense has already said, hey, we're going to slide to the left, there's no way that you can double team him if if he goes against that, right? Uh, from the defensive side, you can get one-on-one matches. You can draw them up, uh, especially if the offensive line only keeps like six guys into block. But um, if the Raiders are able to secure a top-tier defensive tackle, I think Leonard Williams is the one that everybody wants right now. Um, I wouldn't mind going out and getting J.J. Watt. I know he's played defensive end a lot, but I think he can play that three-tag defensive tackle as well. I mean, if Cleveland Farrell can do it, J.J. Watt can 100% do it, right? Um, it's going to be interesting, man. I'm, I'm pumped up. I hope you guys are pumped up. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know it's kind of all over the place, uh, but I definitely did want to talk a little bit about Juju as well as Derek and his trade. Uh, the rumors, because they're going to be uh, the whole offseason, they're going to be everywhere, right? Uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it really does make a difference. Uh, it allows this video to be shown to other Raider fans, and then they can pretty much see the video and then come and comment. And uh, we can all talk, right? I love reading your guys' comments. So make sure to also leave a comment, hit that like button, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.